Hi. Um, so what I'm going to present today, I'm, going, I'm the one presenting, but really Declan, Jamie, and the rest of the Arnold team have contributed tremendously to what I'm going about to show. So, hey, um, so I'm part of Autodesk. We make cool stuff. Check us out at some point. Uh, I work on the Arnold renderer. Arnold is, is a high-quality production renderer for visual effects in, in film and, and feature animation. It's used more than like 300 studios, has made tons of films, TV shows, series, animation. Um, Arnold was instrumental in the shift toward a physically based light transport simulation in production rendering and uh, got an Academy Award for it uh, last year. So Arnold is available as a standalone renderer in, uh, as a plugin in Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, Houdini, Katana, and uh, even Softimage. Uh, so if you attended the keynote uh, yesterday, this image should be familiar to you. Uh, this is the result of uh, our collaboration with uh, CineSight and VTR. And we'd like to thank all the people involved, uh, getting the approvals for that asset. Like if you have ever worked on a Marvel uh, TV, uh, show, getting the approval for that asset was uh, not a small feat. Extracting the asset out of the CineSight pipeline was uh, a lot of work. Tweaking it to work around the limitation of the engine. Uh, tweaking the engine to work uh, for the, with that asset, and getting everything to work well on the new hardware on a very, very short deadline was no small feat, so thank you to everyone involved. Um, the result is a real production asset. It's a real production asset. Like When I say we tweaked it, we tweaked it. We didn't rewrite anything. Um, so real production asset being rendered uh, by Arnold GPU, taking advantage of the new Turing hardware. Uh, like the approval are so complicated that I don't even have the right to show them to you. Like that's someone, someone took a picture. <laughs> and so the talk is divided in three parts. Uh, first, I'm going to show what we aim to do with Arnold GPU. It might be familiar if you attended GTC. And uh, then I'll, I'll describe how we implemented the production feature on top of optics and then a quick impression of Turing because we're just scratching the surface here. So, uh, what we wanted to do when bringing Arnold to the GPU, we wanted to have a single renderer, which is feature compatible, pixel compatible, and API compatible. So, what does it mean? Um, so, it means that a single renderer is it's a single software where you can switch from uh, GPU to CPU seamlessly. Uh, it's basically it's just a checkbox. You can switch CPU to GPU in, uh, as a checkbox in every uh, software we support. And, and all, in, like here I'm showing uh, switching from CPU to GPU in, in, in I think it's Houdini. Uh, there's Cinema 4D, there's, uh, like, that's, this, this is Katana. So it's very important for us to have a, a single renderer where we can have, share the code base, share the efforts, share the quality, and be able to switch from one to another. So yeah, the GPU is just another render device for Arnold. Feature compatibility. Yeah, the end, the end goal uh, is to support everything. We're targeting final frame. It's not preview rendering. And, and um, the problem with that is that Arnold has tons of features. It's ex extremely flexible. Some of them are hard to support. So we won't get there in like the first version, but uh, that's definitely the goal and we're not cutting corners. Um, so here is the showcase of what we are. This is new because uh, we've improved a lot since GTC. So this is uh, images rendered by some of our beta users. We're in private beta now. Register interest if you want to join. Uh, yeah, we're rendering volumetrics. Um, recently, Arnold 5.2 uh, added a, a bunch of new um, cloth rendering shader. So this, since we share the code base, this was supported from the first day. Uh, this asset is particularly cool. Uh, like thanks to Sora for helping us rendering that asset on GPU. This is using everything. This is random walk subsurface scattering. This is uh, the, the multiple scattering in hair. This is one complicated asset as well. Like very highly detailed. Like the, the artist is, is ex extremely good. Um, okay, so that's for the, the, the features we are, we are trying to support. Like, we're trying to support everything. Um, and pixel compatibility. Pixel compatibility is, is uh, something that, that uh, we, we aim for. And there's multiple levels in pixel compatibility between CPU and GPU. The first level is you're doing look dev and lighting on your assets. 
and you trust the result enough to kick it to the render farm with the same settings and hoping to get that image, the image that you worked on. That's the first level. We, we, we're there already. Uh, the next level is uh, you're rendering shots on GPU and running shots on CPU for the same production. That's, that's something where we, uh, a place where we, we want to get. A uh, bit harder, you're rendering some frames of the shot on GPU, some frames of the shot on CPU. You need to really, really trust the, the compatibility between the two modes. And, and finally, like the holy grail is hybrid computing, right? Like you're rendering the same frame on both CPU and GPU. And again, that's where we want to be. Uh, there's some trade-offs. Maybe you don't want to do that. Uh, you, you don't want to do the first, the, the last level when you're doing look dev because you want to take advantage of, of hardware, of very fast hardware texturing, or you want to support a filter important sampling and not very complex and heavy sample sharing. Um, Arnold is a splitting path tracer. Splitting path tracing doesn't map really well on the GPU because of stack space. So there's some trade-offs, there's some things that we need to address, and uh, yeah, we are taking, taking one at a time. So first level is, is already looking good. API compatibility is also extremely important for us. Like Arnold is a ray tracing and rendering library. It's not a black box. Um, and part of the, the Arnold success is due to that, that API. Like people were, are able to take the API and integrate it in their own tool. Like we have clients developing whole ecosystems around Arnold. And we designed the GPU acceleration as part of this API. Like the Arnold, uh, the current version of Arnold GPU I'm using, it's a drop in DLL replacement. And you drop the DLL and you can use it in your tool as you've been using Arnold. So yeah, that's that's what we were uh, what we are trying to do, and uh, we'll get there. Okay, next part. Uh, I'm going to talk about how. Um, oh wait, no, I should probably mention something. So we're using optics. Uh, <laughs> quite important. So um, the optics framework has improved a lot over the past two years. And if you're like me, two years ago, and the last version of optics you've tried is optics one, uh, take another look because it's way, way, way better, and it's getting even better every, every month. Uh, we've had a, a great collaboration with the team. I am not going to thank every one of you, uh, but like, you know who you are, and thanks thank a lot. Uh, we had a great collaboration with the team, uh, which can be shown in the motion blur specification, which is completely compatible with how Arnold is doing machine learning. The, um, the compilation, long compilation times is an issue that is partially solved by the compilation cache. Again, it's something that we've um, not been designing but requesting hard for the past two years. Uh, OSL is, uh, is, is something else that we, that we need and it's, it's coming. So you can see that the dynamic here, like the optics team is, is super helpful to help us uh, address the, the shortcomings. Okay. So how do you use optics to build a production renderer? So there's many aspects to a production renderer. One of them is uh, arbitrary big shading networks. I'm going to focus on that and how we leverage optics to implement it on the GPU. So this is a shading network. It's not a particularly complex shading network. The Spider-Man asset uses probably around 15 of that, and that's a single character. Well, this one has probably 60 nodes. Uh, it's super hard to, 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 to see there, but there's, on, on, on the right, there's two Uber shaders that are uh, layered together, and on the left, there's uh, UDIM tiles. And in the middle, you have a whole set of shuffle nodes, um, some probably some, some uh, procedural noise, uh, some color correction. That's, that is a normal uh, shading graph, and the artists expect to be able to change any parameters, change connections um, all the time. So that's, what, that's the kind of thing that you need to ingest to do production rendering, and if it answers a bit your, uh, your production shaders, we'll, we'll get to the performance as well. Um, and, and, and it has other features, like just evaluating that is not enough. Uh, you, you need to be able to do things like sub-component -comp linking when you connect a small component to another big array of things. Uh, it needs to support complex rules for casting. You want, to you want to connect a float value to a vector. You want to connect uh, a color to a closure. You want to get, like, do all sorts of crazy things. So evaluating that shading network, just evaluating the connection, is not, not trivial. So how do we do that? 
Uh, another constraint that we have is that, as I said, I want to be, we want to be API compatible, right? Um, so it means that we want to be able to run the Arnold shading API. This isn't a real Arnold shader doing, it's a mix uh, between two closure lists. It's a real Arnold shader, you could compile that. Uh, so we want to be able to support this API. Uh, this API is doing parameter evaluation, closure list merging, and, and, and so on. And we want to do that because we're lazy and we don't want to, re to write our shaders twice because there's hundreds of them and our users are using hundreds of them and we want to enable them to write GPU shaders as well. So how do we do that? So first thing is getting the Arnold Public API to compile in, in, in optics. Uh, this, 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 is, this took a long time, but we get there. All of that code is running on both CPU and GPU. So that's the first thing. And then you have this massive shading network. You have this, like you have 60 times that connected and, and running at the same time doing evaluations. So there's two solutions, basically. First solution is to inline everything as a massive uh, closest hit and any hit program in optics. You could, it's, it's, it's doable, like the, the, just uh, optics is a compiler, so you can uh, com compile everything to PTX, mash the PTX together, do, do, do some sort of, of assembly, and, and it, it, in theory it should work. The problem with that is right now our closest hit programs are, are taking 45 seconds to compile. If we inline a production shader in them, we are probably looking at two minutes of compilation every time we add a shader, probably. And, and, and there's also a good chance that at some point it's going to break. So we didn't went for that uh, because Optics is a compiler. Optics supports the notion of callable programs. So in theory, you could implement every of those shaders as callable programs. And that's where the Optics team starts to have nightmares because that's what we did. Uh, like you see this macro, this, this, is a, this macro over the, at the top is part of the Arnold API and uh, on the CPU, it compiles as a function that is going to be loaded as a plugin as a, as a function pointer. On the GPU, it compiles as a, a callable program. So we're using a single optics callable program per shader. And we, it was the first try, and we run it through those massive shaders. It was relatively easy to implement, so first good reason of using that. Uh, on the large shading network, it performs well enough. Uh, the, the, the slowdown is roughly progresses with the complexity of the shader a bit, bit slower than that, so that's good. I mean, that, that if you're not using it, you're not paying for it too much. If you're using it, you're paying for it, but you know what you get. Um, callable programs are not free, right? Uh, they have overhead in, them, in terms of code generation, so they will increase the code size. Uh, for example, when we implemented the, the subcomponent linking in the graph, which was switching from one callable program call to four per parameter. Uh, that's the point where the mega kernel, the, the default mode of, of optics stopped working for us and we discontinued that. We're only using experimental version of optics now. So yeah, living on the edge. Um, there's another limitation that we hope will be lifted soon is the uh, ray tracing in callable programs. Right now you can't reach ray tracing in callable programs and this is preventing us right now from implementing uh, like ambient occlusion shadow, shadow math and those kind of things. So yeah, uh, basically we, did, we went for the dumb thing and it works. It's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, about the overhead of that. So this, is, this, is, this, this image is, I rendered this image twice. Once with um, a shading network, it's quite simple. It's just a metal shader, right? And once with inlining everything, because I use a single shader because it's easy to inline, and, and, and that's the overhead of, of, of using a shading network evaluation through collaborative programs or inlining everything yourself. It is good enough for us. And, I, I, and again, I, when your shader complexity increases, your render time are going to increase, but then again, you're doing more work, so you, you expect that. Um, future work on that, on that because never, nothing is ever finished. Um, maybe, like as I said, callable programs in optics have some sort of overhead, so maybe mixing and lining in callable programs would be good, like the, the small utility one we could inline, the big one we could keep as callable programs. 
and the OSL, of course, OSL will compile to a single, a shading network to a single uh, callable program and will be relatively fast to compile because OSL is relatively fast to compile. So OSL is definitely uh, some, so, so something that we look at and, and anyway we have to port it because it is supported in Arnold and we want to be uh, feature complete. Uh, and that's, that's the second part of my presentation. The last part of my presentation, and again, it's going to be a short one because we got the hardware two weeks ago. Um, so, uh, experimenting with Turing. So right out, right from the start, uh, uh, the speed ups that we get, that we got after porting the triangle API and running it on, on a Turing card was a two X speed ups on that scene. Uh, on a GV100, which doesn't soon sound too impressive if, if, you, if you follow the, the, the previous numbers, for example, but it's not that bad, considering that on that scene, around 60% of the time is spent in shaders. So even if Turing made the traversal nearly free, it also improved the performance beyond that, which is pretty good because the GV100 is one big card, uh, like it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, this scene is uh, dominated by shading time. Like, and if you follow the, the, the performance recommendation from, from Oliver from the first presentation, we violate every single one of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, um, RTX is definitely working for, for, for that scene and it's working well with shading too. Um, and, and then we, 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 we started to do another experiment. Um, so, so, so we, we know that, that, uh, that RTX and the new Turing hardware is, is really, really good at um, rays with low overhead. Like the rays we have with the production shaders have a gigantic amount of overhead. Like this is pulling 8K textures. This is doing uh, 60 shader evaluation. Those rays are not cheap. Even, even, even if the rays itself is cheap, every time it hits the surface, it is tremendously expensive. Our shadow rays are very, very cheap. So a small experiment that we did on, 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 on that asset was to crank up the number of shadow rays. Uh, so, so the main bar is the CPU one. I hate doing CPU versus GPU comparison because that's never the whole story. It's just that there is a baseline. CPU has way more features. So features have a cost, but it's just here to, pro to provide a, ba a baseline. The two interesting bars for me are the GV100 and the RTX 6000. So on, on the first data point, we are tracing 200 millions of ray on a 4K frame. At the far end, we are tracing 5 billions of shadow rays. And if you, if you see on a, on a new card, the, the difference in, in rendering times between tracing 200 million rays and, and, and five, five billions is relatively small. And, and then you start to think about, hey, I have those very, very cheap rays. So it is probably going to unlock some research. Like Arnold goes every time for the expensive thing, the expensive sampler, because the expensive sampler is sometimes statistic, statistically infinitely better. Like this, in some case, it, it won't, it won't uh, converge. But maybe instead of going for a very, very complex sampler that is slowing things down interactively, we, need, we could go for very, very cheap shadow rays and just shoot a lot more of them. Um, there's some light transport simulation that requires tracing lots of rays, like the subsurface uh, scattering simulation, for example. So I really, really hope that that, that, that Turing is going to, and, and, and the, those new very, very cheap rays are going to unlock new, new areas of research. And um, that's it for me. Uh, definitely go to the booth. You'll see the, the Spider-Man asset running in real time, either in the Autodesk booth or the NVIDIA booth. I'll be showing more videos and, and, and generally less uh, nerdy stuff uh, tomorrow as well, uh, more example and, 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 and stuff like that. And also, uh, as I said, we are on the private beta. So if you're interested in joining the beta, like, reach out.